quite exactly what they are in case you're not entirely sure what they are. Um, the different types of lead magnets you would probably have and kind of when to use them and also how you can deliver lead magnets through PTD. Not just how, but when you should start thinking about delivering them through PTD and how that can actually help. So first of all, um, if you are watching on here, feel free to say hello. Feel free to ask questions in the comments. If you're watching on the replay, um, feel free just to type replay in there, just so I know you watch on the replay so I can keep an eye. And if you've got any questions that come up, I'll try and answer them in the comments as well as we go through it all. So first of all, what actually is a lead magnet? Well, if you're not sure what a lead magnet is, basically it's a way of attracting a lead. Now, a lead is just somebody who is not necessarily a client yet. It's somebody that is showing some level of interest in your business. And the idea is once you get that lead into your lead database, so this collection of leads, this collection of people, potential clients, and that's basically what a lead is, it's a potential client, ideally. And you're going to bring them in, and the idea is you then start to nurture these leads. So you, you work with them on a level to try and build up this know, like, and trust with them. So eventually, if they know you, they like what you talk about and like what you do, and they trust you to help them solve the problem they've got, then the idea is they'll hand over some money and purchase your services. So that's basically what a lead is. It's a potential client. So a lead magnet is basically something, a magnet, that attracts these leads into your business. So once they're in your business, you can then nurture them into paying clients. So, um, hey, Joe, how are we doing? Hey, Jed, he's got his little sneaky eyes on. Um, so that's basically what a lead uh, magnet is. Now, in order to capture that lead, there's a number of ways of doing it. You can capture leads using things like Facebook, have their Facebook Messenger. Uh, you can capture it via uh, emails as well. Now, emails is probably the most popular one of doing it. The reason a lot of people like emails um, is generally because you actually not own that data, but you have that data can use it. For example, if you're doing it just through Facebook and Facebook Messenger, there's very little control you have over it. You know, Facebook, I'm not saying there would, but they could have go, man, eh, we're not doing that anymore. Uh, and then you kind of lost all information. Where if you have email addresses, at least you have some pretty direct contact um, with that particular lead that you can follow up with. Another way of doing it is through um, SMS text messages. You can send text messages through to your clients as well to nurture leads that way uh, and cover uh, text messages as, as a way of communicating with them to nurture the leads. The other thing you can do as well is use the likes of, again, it's kind of like Messenger, but they have got softwares like ManyChat, for example, that can have automated sequence stuff that run for the likes of Messenger through WhatsApp, through Instagram, all that kind of thing. So there's lots of different ways, but basically what you're trying to do here is capture that lead's contact details, so their email address or whatever it is. It, in some circumstances, maybe if you own a gym, for example, you might want to get their postal address so you can post things out to them as well. It all depends really on a number of different things. One is the type of business you have and the type of offer you're trying to make to them. The other thing as well is also whereabouts they are in your leads journey. And that's the next thing I want to come on to this when we talk about lead magnets. It's not all lead magnets should be the same. Yes, when starting out, start off with something simple and easy to use, which we'll talk about in a second. But as your business progresses, you're going to want to have different types of lead magnets. And the reason you're going to want to have different types of lead magnets is because every lead is at a different stage in the journey when they come to you. If you have a lead, for example, that you've maybe engaged with and spoke to online and had conversations with and then they go and sign up to something because they already have a certain level of this know, like, and trust. You know, they, they understand who you are, they know who you are, they like the stuff you talk about, and they trust you enough to at least give you some contact details in exchange for some information, the lead magnet. Then you can actually build a lead magnet that's going to require a bit more commitment from them. And what I mean by commitment is normally a time commitment or an information commitment. So, for example, some people might be comfortable giving you an email address, they might be comfortable giving you a phone number. But they might not be comfortable giving you an address. Likewise, some people might be comfortable giving you an email address, but not a phone number. And that's all to do with that know, like, and trust. So if you just have one lead magnet out there that's going to require all their contact details, then it might not work for everybody because you've got the other types of leads who maybe earlier on in their lead journey with you who haven't really met you yet. So they don't really know who you are. They maybe heard, heard about you from somewhere else or seen you somewhere. They were going to come and check you out. And if it's the first time they've checked you out and you go and say to them, I want all this information off you, they're probably going to say no because they just don't know who you are. They don't trust you enough or know you enough yet or like what you're talking about yet to say, here's some contact details because I want you to contact me with more information. And that's the kind of situation you want to be you, you kind of in if you have the wrong type of lead bank at the wrong time. So you do want to have different types of lead banks depending on their journey. So 
what are the different types of lead magnets you can have? Well, there's obviously lots and lots of different ones. All you're effectively trying to do here is offer your lead um, some information or some value in exchange for that contact information. Now, the value side is the important bit here. You want to give it value, especially with any kind of lead magnet. Yes, you might have what we call like application form processes. So sometimes if you've developed a relationship with clients online, you put content out there, you've been speaking to them, all that kind of stuff, and you've built a relationship with them, you can kind of go straight in with an application form. You know, someone can fill some details in, and then you'll either jump on a call, have a chat with them, that kind of approach. That can work really well with gyms, um, especially if you've got an in-person stuff. A little bit different online, depending on the type of program you want to offer and depending on what type of marketing and things you've done prior to that. So, for example, if you've got no like interaction at all, you're not doing stuff online, they've just found you through Googling, for example, or just scrolling around, it's unlikely they're going to put their details into an application form. Uh, and if they do, and they do turn up on the sales call with you, um, it's not like they're going to actually go and sign straight away. So that means that that could be a waste of your time. So sometimes having a better structure of lead magnets can actually help narrow down the people that do go for your application process, that do jump on sales calls with you, or do go through to your website or whatever. So they're more likely to actually purchase from you. So there's definitely some benefits having different lead magnets as well to nurture people up to that level where they can actually apply. So we have this kind of application process, um, if you like, as one type of them. Someone that really knows you pretty well already and they're a bit more likely to find up. And all they want to do is have some more information, have a conversation when you find out what you're, what you're all about. Now, we can go back a step, um, right back to the beginning, actually, to what do you do with clients that don't really know who you are, people that never really met you before? So let's say you're running, I won't say cold ads, but some ads out to people. Um, they never really met you before. They think, oh, cool, what's this? Not likely, especially for online programs, that they're going to go straight onto an application for making happen, um, but it's not always likely. So you might want to offer something else out there in exchange for their contact information. So that could just be, um, it could be something as simple as like a PDF like an ebook, maybe you create a very simple ebook that you can, they can download and have access to straight away in exchange for an email address that you can send it to, uh, or maybe uh, their WhatsApp or maybe their Facebook messenger or whatever it is, or their, or their phone number. The other thing might be to offer uh, like a white paper. So white papers can talk about um, just some information about something they're interested in. We'll talk about that in just a second. Something they're actually interested in, something that's actually going to be relating to them. It can include things like testimonials and stuff like that. And in fact, no matter what you actually put out there as a lead magnet, you should include some social proof, some testimonials in there with that lead magnet. Now, whether you do that straight away, so for example, if you're using like a PDF uh, or an ebook, I would definitely have some testimonials in there, but what I would do with those testimonials is kind of relate them to what you're talking about inside that ebook. So people can see that the information you've got here is actually starting to lead to results for people who are just like them. And that leads me nicely onto the next bit is it needs to be people just like them. When you're creating lead magnets, you want to be thinking about solving a particular type of problem or helping solve a particular type of program for a client. You're not trying to solve everything. You're just trying to solve one particular pro uh, problem for them. And in order to go and do that, especially online, you need to really start to understand who your actual client is and who you actually want to go and work with. So the more you understand about your, your niche, if you like, your avatar, if you like, the easier it actually is to create a lead magnet, especially online. Again, a little bit different when it comes to in-person, if you're running gyms and studios, because you've got people want to go looking for a gym. They want to go and get particular help. There's, there's lots of things you can offer there, such as free sessions, free consultations, all that kind of stuff. Now, the more you understand your client or your lead, if you like, or your, or your ideal client, the easier this process is going to be. So if you haven't really done that yet, and maybe take five minutes if you're struggling with any kind of lead, so take a step back and go, okay, what actually is my, you know, who is my client? What are they actually struggling with? What is the biggest problem that I solve for them in my business? Then take that problem. And if you're really struggling with a topic or something to think about, to write about for your lead magnet, is go down there and say, okay, what things actually help my client solve that particular problem? So big bit of paper, write on it. This is the problem that I'm solving for them. What are all the things my lead, if you like, or a potential client can do in order to solve that particular problem? And then look at that and then highlight the one thing on that list at the expense of everything else that's going to help them get closer to solving that problem. So just the one thing. So if you were to take away everything on that list and only get them to do one thing, which one of those one things on that list would help them get closer to that particular goal and solve that problem? And that's generally what I would base your lead magnet around. And then what you want to do is start tweaking and adapting that so it's making a an offer to them that they'll actually like. It's going to relate to them. So that's the kind of thing you want to be doing with any kind of lead magnet that you write. 
So we now understand a bit about who our client is and how we want to work with them. We now understand that we can, depending on where they are, if you like, in that lead journey, the type of different lead mates you want to give to them. But how does all this kind of relate to PTD? And why is it important to understand, one, what problems you're trying to solve for them, who you're going to work with, but also what stage they're at? And the reason it's important to understand what stage they're at is because in PTD, there's a couple of bits of information you want to give to them. You're asking somebody to effectively download and sign up to your app. That's what you're asking them to do. There needs to be a reason they want to do that. How many times have you just downloaded an app from someone's website without knowing who they are? It's unlikely. And yes, they're going to go through Google. Yes, they're going to go through um, they're going to go through like the Apple App Store, which is fine. It's going to add some credibility and stuff there. But you're still asking them to go and do it. You're also still asking them to put in information and set up an account with you, so like a membership area with you. Now, if they're interested in finding out more about you and they already know a little bit about you before then, they're likely to go and do it. If they have just come to that one place and they've never seen you or heard of you before and they're not particularly looking for anything like that, then it's going to be more difficult for them to give you that information. So you need to be thinking about this lead magnet that you're going to create inside PTD. At what level are you targeting this lead magnet at them? And if you are, how are you going to nurture that lead to get them into that lead magnet in the first place? So what stuff can you do online to try and build up that relationship with them to bring them into your lead magnet? So inside PTD, the best way to do lead magnets is to do something that's obviously automated. Because at the end of the day, you're going to get a quite a few people that sign up to these lead magnets that won't necessarily um, sign up. So you don't want to be doing lots of manual work. So you want to automate some of this process. Now, the best way to automate processes in PTD is to use groups and pre-made packages. So I'm going to show you one um, that you can kind of do in here. Uh, and this one here is going to be a five-day mini-series. It's just because it's something we talk about a lot in the PT Ninja 101 course and the online training, per the online personal training certification, because it's a really good way of actually converting clients into uh, leads into paying clients. It works particularly well with, with leads that you've maybe nurtured a little bit before. So if you've had people that's had contact with you, maybe through a Facebook group, maybe for your page, maybe on your email list that you've got, or maybe a few people you've had conversations with online through Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever it is. These kind of lead magnets that I'm talking about here are really good for that kind of thing. Um, there's been some suggestions on the group as well. We're doing like some five sample workouts and, and that kind of thing. Again, same principle. These are really good for people that maybe you've had some level of interaction with you, maybe referrals and that kind of thing as well. They can work really well with. So let's just go and take a look over here uh, at what's going on inside PTD. So in here, we're going to first have a lead magnet group. Now, because this is automated, you could just have one group for this. And that's what we've done here to set it up, to keep it nice and simple. Just one group. And inside that group, what we've done is we've added in uh, a couple of different documents in here uh, with different tasks and that are drip feeding out each day. Each one has a very basic um, video inside each one. There's some information about it, some tasks for them to complete. And that's it, really, really simple and easy. So they get a new thing to go and do each week. This is why I think it's a good idea for them to have some level of interaction with you because you're going to ask them to go and do things. And because you ask them to go and do things and take action, if they do take action on this, they're actually more likely to go and purchase from you when you get to the end of this process, which I'll talk about in just a second. Now, if it's just things like an ebook or something like that, you want to go away with it. The difference in terms of processes, they might just read that and then do nothing else with it. So that's going to be become reliant on you following up with them, which again, we'll talk about in a second and the importance of. So you have to keep following up with them, maybe having automated sequences go out and things like that to help build up that relationship some more. With this, this whole process is there and it's all going to be done through the app. So it means that they're going to get new content all the time. It's going to show off the type of tools you have available to help coach them. And you want to be really getting this focused around that one problem we talked about. So the one problem you're solving and the most important thing they can do to help solve that problem, have this lead magnet based around that. So things they can do, very short, simple things to do each day to go in action, to actually go and get on closer to solving that particular problem. And they can include things like habits in there and tracking and things like that if you want to, just to give them a little example of what it's like. Other cool lead balance that works similar to this will be stuff like free trials. So if you do memberships, you can include a free trial that does a similar kind of thing. Um, that will also works just as well if, you, if you're going down that approach as well. Uh, but again, these are things you want to be offering out to people that's had some level of interaction beforehand. So you built up some level of trust, um, some level of that no like and trust, as I mentioned earlier. And also inside there as well, you want to make sure you have an email sequence going out to them. So there's some email sequence inside here running out to the client. Obviously, these can run as long as you want to, because when a client signs up to this, you'll give them access for the length of the lead magnet, and then you can actually automatically move them offline, which I'm going to show you in a second. Now, when you do that, you can still send emails to offline clients, to inactive clients. So you can have this email sequence going out to them. 
So once you've got your group and stuff set up, you can then head over to your pre-made package. You can build a pre-made package for this in here. So here we go over lead magnet, hit the drop down menu, click view edit. And in here, you can then put in your lead magnet group in here. Um, you can add in your all clients group. They'll automatically go into that anyway now with the new system groups in PTD. Um, and that's what you need to do. Go into the sell line section, move that to no payments. And then down the advanced options, you can switch this for whatever length your lead magnet is, a week, two weeks, or your free trial, or whatever it is on here. Once you've actually got that in, then what we're going to do is head back up into the sell line section. You'll save this, and you'll take this iframe here. Now, this iframe is a code that you can add to your website, much like you would do if you're adding your integrations to your website or anything else like that. So take that, you'll put it onto your website. Uh, I go onto like a landing page for them, talks about the benefits of your lead magnet and why they should do it. Again, you want to keep this short and sweet. You don't want a massive sales copy page or anything like that. You want to get straight to the point here, you know, call out who the client is or call out who your lead is and the problem that they've got and how this little lead magnet here might help them solve that particular problem. Um, and away they go and just explain the process to them in there. Let them go and sign up and fill that form in, and then they'll go through that process. After a week, in this case, it'll automatically move them to inactive. They'll continue to receive upsell emails going out to them to bring them onto whatever's next. So that either can be uh, onto a sales call, which if you're just starting out, is something I'd probably recommend you do. Uh, and also, you can have it so it takes them to like a landing page or a sales page on your website as well, where they can go sign up to your different uh, programs and stuff on there. So depending again on the route you want to go will depend on what you actually do in terms of those emails and things going out to them. Now, the last thing I want to quickly talk about on here, because I promise I'd only keep this down to um, a few minutes, is following up with them. So another cool thing you can do inside PTD, you can kind of use PTD, PTD or PTD Distinction as a, as a CRM, so a customer relationship management. Now, I want to show you a flagship group down here. So this is the group set up for main program. This will be the program that the lead bag that will lead into. I'm going to open up this premium package that we set up in here. I'm going to go to the remove from group section. And then here you can see we actually have that lead magnet group in here. Now, the reason we have that in here is because we have that email sequence going out that I was showing you a moment ago. With that email sequence going out, what that basically means is that when a client is added to this package or they start to this package and purchase this package or however they're getting into it, it will automatically remove them from this group. So that means it will stop any of those upsell emails from going out. They're not going to get sold something that they already have which is always a bonus. The other cool thing about it is that you know now that if you go to your search up here and type in lead magnet, that if you click on this here and go up to this section here with your view members, anyone inside this list here is somebody that has signed up to your lead magnet, shown some interest, but not purchased from you yet. So that means you can go in there and start following up outside of P2D. You can have conversations with them. You can look at what interaction they've had in their lead magnet and say, okay, hey, cool. it looks like you've done lots of things inside here, but I know you haven't had a chance to go and have a look uh, at our program, or I know you haven't had a chance yet to book on for a call. Uh, would you like to go and arrange that now? Like have these conversations with them and follow up with your leads. That's one of the, the biggest things that we see over at Peter Ninja that people just do not do. They do not follow up with their leads enough. They really don't. There's just money left on the table. Um, so if you're going to do anything from this, go and follow up with your leads, no matter where they're from. But um, yeah, so you can do things that like, and kind of use it like a CRM, because then when they do purchase, it will move them out of there. And it gives you lots of data as well. So you can see the level of interaction. You know, if they signed to this and didn't interact, again, you can follow up with them, but ask them, okay, hey, I know it's just time to this. Was the problem with you logging in or, or whatever it was? So you can start building up these conversations and having these conversations with these leads who show the level of interest with you. Like I say, you can do things inside here at that kind of level, like mini challenges or free trials and things like that. Uh, in terms of things delivering PDFs and downloads and stuff like that, you can do that through PD if you really wanted to, doing exactly the same thing, just having the PDF in there. But of course, you can also do that through other software as well, such as like MailChimp or, or anything else along those lines, Active Campaign that like to send those kind of lead magnets out to people. And then you can obviously then move them up your lead magnet journey, if you like your lead journey, and bring them into something like this. This is why having these multiple lead magnets are good. So for example, having an ebook with like five top tips to solve whatever the problem is, and then offering people in that lead book, actually, why don't you come join my five-day mini course on solving whatever problem, or why don't you come try out my free trial for my whatever membership program. So having that kind of process is going to really help when it comes to generating leads. The one last thing I want to leave you before we go um, is make sure your lead magnet is conducive to your main program. A lot of people try and do this stuff first because it feels like it's first inside the program, but it shouldn't be. What you need to focus on first is building out your main offer, your main program that you want to deliver your clients, and then start talking to people, having conversations, and getting that out there. Once you've got that out, then start working backwards. 
work backwards from there and think, okay, I'm going to create a lead magnets or lead magnets now to help bring people into my main program. But your priority should always be whatever your main offer is, because that's going to give you so much information about how you can actually help your clients and put together a better lead magnet. Anyway, um, that's it for me. I hope that's been helpful. It's been useful. Again, if you've got any questions at all um, and you're watching this on the replay, just let us know inside the comments. Uh, have an absolutely awesome weekend if I don't speak to you before, and I'll see you all soon. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.